There we go. Okay, so if you guys are ready, uh, I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through lesson two. So this is, these are, this covers basic retouching techniques. Um, pretty standard for most images, um, especially for images that are a little bit older, but even for new images, there's always something that can be adjusted. White balance, general range between lights and darks, and you can use curves or you can use levels or brightness, um, contrast for that. <clears throat> so to the left, we have our start file and to the right, we have our end file. Um, so I have them side by side, just so I can make um, a nice comparison as I work to see if I'm, um, mine is compatible with the finished version. And that's what I'd like yours to be. Get it, try to get it close to the, what the final version looks like. Um, so let's, ex let me explain a few things that are going on here. So the first thing is that you can see that this is an old image that was scanned and it was slightly um, crooked so that it had to be straightened and cropped. That would be the first thing that we would do. You'll also notice that due to age, it's slightly yellowed a little bit. Colors quite aren't vibrant as they should be. So we're gonna make that correction. Those are a couple of things that we do right off the bat. Then if we zoom in a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead here, make sure that this one is selected and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit using Command Plus. Um, my, I've got a bunch of things going on my computer, so it's a little bit sluggish. But you can see that the image was creased. So we wanna get that out of it as well. You'll notice that there's some dust and scratches and stuff that need to be removed. These little artifacts that we wanna get rid of. Those are the easy pieces. Those are the easy, that's easy peasy. That's, we can get that done um, very easily. The hardest part, which is what we'll finish with today, and I don't know that I will finish it because it's like watching grass grow. Um, and I don't know that you wanna watch me do that, but I will get you started with this. Notice that this fellow over here to the right in the final version is completely gone. So that takes a little bit of work. It's easy to get started, to get him removed, but to, um, to finalize it and to make it look like, uh, it, it make it seamless so you really can't tell that it's been retouched unless you look very closely. And if you look really, really closely in the background here, let me zoom in a little bit on that as well. Um, whoops, wrong file, back over here. Move this over just a little bit. You can see that there's a little bit of repetition back here that really doesn't belong. But it's, you know, in the background, it's not that important. And it was more important that, that we got rid of him first. So <clears throat> that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead over here. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit to get us started. And I'm going to show you the easy way to crop. That's the first thing that we'll do. So I'm going to select the crop tool over here. There we go. I don't want any <clears throat> preset numbers that I have used before. So I'm going to reset all of this. I don't want it to be 72. <clears throat> so now I can come in here and I can just change all of this at, um, at whim, you know. Um, decide whatever size I want with this, and that will be fine. I don't want to do that. So as I said, my computer is a little bit sluggish at the moment. So let me move this back into place. There we go. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is straighten it. And there is a tool when you have a crop tool selected to use. It's this little tool right here called straighten. So I'm going to pull this up just a little bit so I can see this straight edge here. And what I do is I click on this little button. I move over to the image and I click and I drag across. You'll notice a little guideline that appears and I want to align it 
with the image itself. And as soon as I let go, you'll notice that it straightens it and makes it perfectly horizontal. So that's the first step. Um, that's pretty easy. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to move this in a little bit on each side and then I'll crop it. Now, I haven't duplicated the ground layer yet, and that's usually one of my go-to methods here. But since I'm cropping it, it doesn't matter. And also make sure that you don't, again, this is my rule of thumb. This may not be something that the book recommends, but I strongly suggest that you do not permanently delete the pixels that you are cropping because you never know when you might need to or want to bring them back. So crop a little bit of it. I'm taking a little bit of the edges off here. And as soon as I'm done, I can click the checkbox. I can hit the um, return key. Um, I can click on the move tool over here and that will crop it. So I'm just going to click the check checkbox and that crops it for me. There we go. So we made our first, you know, step here. The next step is to brighten it up a little bit. So before I do, as I said, I'm going to follow my guidelines here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Command J to duplicate the layer. So in the event that I mess up um, during the process, during you know the retouching steps. If at any time I want to bring back some of the original image, it's there in the first layer. And for the time being, I can go ahead and I can just turn it off. So let's go ahead and let's, with this new layer selected, I'm going to use adjustment layers. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, <clears throat> just so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And I'm going to choose to use, I forget what the book uses, um, to be quite honest, but you could start by trying levels. That's always a good one. And you'll notice that it's kind of missing highlights here and the darks could be a little bit darker. Lots in the midtones to dark, the middle tone to dark range. You can always click auto to see how that works. And it takes a couple of seconds for it to, to brighten it up. And that looks okay. Not great. So I'll turn it off and I'm going to try another one. So my go to to start with is generally curves. So I select this one here. And then what we're going to do is, I mean, I can start by selecting auto, but I can also use these eyedroppers over here. <clears throat> the top one, um, typically I just use the top and the bottom one. The top one allows me to, to um, to find the black point, and then I need to find the white point. So I need to, to, to select the dark one. It doesn't matter which one you select first. But what I want to do is now with that, that eyedropper, I want to come over here to my image, and I want to try to find the darkest dark in my image. So that could be here in the little girl's um, dress. It could be in a shadow, you know, I'm not sure, you know, so I can click on any one of those and see what happens. And I can click here. And that's not a bad one, you know, click in here. It's a little bit darker. I don't want to darken it up too much, maybe down here. That lightens it up just a little bit. And that's probably where I want to go. Okay, so we want to find probably the darkest part of one of these shadows here. Um, maybe in the little boy's shadow here. That lightens it up a little bit more. That's not bad. So the next step is to find the, um, the white point. So now we ha have to hunt through the photograph and try to find the whitest white. Well, that probably is going to be in the little girl's dress right here. And I click that and that really brings it to life. It gets it very close what we have here, okay? You'll notice that there's a slight difference. We can go back and we can make some other adjustments in here. There's a little bit of too much yellow in here. Um, I will save that for later, but I'm gonna leave the colors here alone. 
Um, you'll also notice that there's, they have rotated this a little bit more, but I'm good to go. I'll leave that alone for right now. Um, the next step now will be to, now that I've straightened the photograph, and that I have um, brought out the brightness and contrast in here. Um, what I want to do is I want to begin retouching and removing the crease and some of the um, uh, the dust and scratches from here. So the best thing to do is to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing and move it over just a tad. And I'm going to start with a crease and that will be one of the, that's really very easy. What we have over here is called a spot healing brush tool. And that's the tool that I want. And you'll notice that on my screen, it's a little bit, the little circle that defines the size of the brush is a little too small. So if I hit the right bracket key and I tap on that a little bit, a couple of times, every time I tap on it, it increases in size. If I hit the left bracket key, and those are the two keys to the right of the P key, um, I can make it smaller. You want it a little bit larger than the area that you have by maybe a third or so. Um, make sure that you have the correct layers selected, which I didn't. I had the adjustment layer. So I want to click on this layer right here, the layer of the image, not on the adjustment layer. And now I move over and I just click. You can click and drag, but I caution you against doing it that way. It looks okay right now, but more often than not, when you click and drag, unless it's an area that is really almost invisible, it will create, excuse me, streaks, little blurred edges. So now I just, you know, step by step, move over, and I click, and voila, it's gone. And as I come across some of these little specks of dust, you move the mouse on top of it and click. And that's it, and they're gone. It's a magic tool. Um, prior to this tool existing, we only had the clone stamp tool. And the clone stamp tool is still a great tool to use um, for certain things. And we will be using it in this exercise here. Um, but for right now, the um, spot healing brush Tool is the way to go. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes here and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And again, everything on my computer is really, really sluggish at the moment. So it's going to take me a little bit. And if I need to, if it works a little better, I go ahead and I increase the size of my brush just a little bit or I decrease it. So you need to play with that setting a little bit and make sure that you um, get the desired results. You just, you know, and as I'm going over this, as, I, as you can see, very slowly, um, it might go a little quicker on your computer because I have a rendering going in the background. Um, also, my hard drive is being backed up. And just a bunch of things. So everything is working a little bit sluggish. Okay, so it won't take too long to get rid of all of this. Um, as I get to the bridge here, I'm probably going to um, make sure that I get a, a seamless edit here, a seamless repair, if you will. I'll probably reduce the size of the brush just a little bit, and I'm going to move up to the edge and then move over like so see what desired what results I get and it looks pretty darn good. So even when I move over on top of the bridge and top on top of um, the river, this looks like it might be Venice, Paris. I'm getting really good results. And you just you know step by step, go through. And like magic, the crease goes away. That's pretty good. 
Now, when we reach these parts, though, you might see in the bricks that sometimes you don't get the desired results. So again, you need to, you know, maybe reduce the size of the brush, make it bigger, because you want to leave where the grout is and some of the artifacts that are in here from the brick or stone or whatever it's used to make this. Um, so I'm going over here just a little bit more. So pretty good results so far, not bad. Um, last few steps here, get rid of this. And as soon as I'm done with all of this, we'll move on to the hard part. And because this is going so quickly, I know it seems like you're watching the grass grow at the moment because of my slow computer. I know I keep repeating that, but I find it really annoying. I didn't think it would be this slow today. Uh, make sure that these lines here guide, these guidelines or the little creases in the, uh, the brick lineup. There's not a problem with that. Might be a few other artifacts that you want to get rid of. Get down to the edge and the last one. And ta-da, I'm done. So this might be a good time to save. Um, I'm going to go up here, though, and I'm going to get rid of some of this quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to drag this over the sky. Because it's a generally a, kind of a neutral area here. And there we go. It's all, you know, might be a couple of little glitches in here that we can go back and fix. But I'm, I'm good to go. I'm ready to move on to the next step and the hardest part, getting rid of the guy there. Now, there's a, a couple of things that the, that the book tells us to do. And I'm going to depart from that and show you the way that I would. I'll show you the way that they suggest that we do it. And I'll also show you the way that I recommend doing it. So let me go ahead and save first. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I don't save on top of my old one. Oh, come on. So I'm going to say save as, not save, because if I say save, it saves it on, it replaces the, the old one with the new one. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep the old one intact, the original file. So I'm going to go ahead and say save on my computer. And this is a TIFF that, that we're working with. So instead, though, I'm going to save this as a Photoshop file. So when you save this, my recommendation is that you switch to Photoshop. You'll notice that the extension is saved. So I'm going to name this um, zero to start working file. That seems to work for me so that I know that this is, and I'm going to name it uh, working file two because I think I already have a working file in there and I'm saving it in the lesson two folder. And when you um, upload your file to the computer, to um, Google Drive, make sure that you put the, the Photoshop file in there so I can see your work in progress going you know, step by step through here. So I can see the adjustment layers, I can see that you've copied the background layer and so on and so forth. So the next step, hardest part, getting rid of him. Because when we get rid of him, we have to make up um, the rest. Now, if, if it had been us, um, you know, or if it had been me taking this photograph, I could have taken a photograph pretty close to the same place. But um, not, if, it's not on a tri if it's on a tripod, it works best. But if it's not, I could take a photograph after he's moved and that, then I could go ahead and I could go back into that second photograph and I could easily replace that information. But since I don't have that information available, I have to use other nearby sources to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and look over here and you can see I probably need to crop this a little bit more but I'm gonna leave it for the time being because I want to be able to use some of this information here. 
So let me show you the way the book tells us to get started with this. What we're going to do is we're going to come over here and underneath the rectangle or the elliptical marquee tool, I'm going to select the polygonal lasso tool. Um, you can just use the lasso tool. You can use pretty much whatever you want. And I'm going to leave, um, go around the, the outside. And I want to leave a little bit of the background here. I don't want to um, get too close to it. And I also want to make sure that to him, I want to make sure that I um, include the shadow. Okay. And I'm going to come down here and again, include a good chunk of this. So here we go. So I'm not, you know, leaving a little bit of marginal space around him. And when I get back to the starting point, I should, I can double click. Oh, come on. Uh, I double clicked and it went away. And I got to go around again. My apologies. Try to go a little faster. But typically, if you go back to the starting point, there will be a little um, zero, a little O in the lower right hand corner of the icon, which indicates that you have come back around to where you have started. And as soon as you click on that point, it will automatically, let me see if I can get that, close the path. And there it is. It's very hard to see, probably. But there you go. I get the little marching ants, so I call them. Now what I want to do, once that is selected, I want to come down here and there is another tool underneath the spot healing brush tool called the patch tool. And that's the one that the book recommends that we use. So what I want to do now is I want to click anywhere on this fellow and drag him over like so. And I'm moving very carefully over here, like so. Getting close to the woman, but not quite. And I'm trying to match up the, um, the stone wall to make sure at the bottom where it matches the, um, the ground plane in the top, where the top caps are. And I'm gonna let, then I let go. And you can see that it, it's not bad, but it's a little bit difficult to replace this. But you know, it, it's a good start, so why not? Let's go ahead and um, let's leave that. For some reason, um, I don't care about the Wacom thing. So why it's bringing that up on my screen, I don't know. Come on. Okay. So next step, there we go, now that went away. So we have a few things that we need to clean up here. Um, so I'm going to leave some of this here. Why not? I can move some of it about. Um, it actually isn't, doesn't look half bad at the moment. But there's a few little things that I need to clean up because the, you'll notice that the brick wall back here doesn't match. So I can take this and I can move it down. That would be a good thing to do. I can also use elements from here. And this is where we will use the clone stamp tool because it took parts of the building that we don't want and replaced it. And I'm going to take parts of the building that I do want and use the clone stamp tool to replace and these, these windows here. So it requires kind of a, you know, a slow but sure retouching um, tools. Um, and the clone stamp works great for that. The other one, though, is you'll notice that there's repeated. And this is the easy part to, re to repair. Um, we come down here, and you'll notice that these little cracks in the stonework are repeated. Well, that's a, 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 a real clear sign that the image has been retouched when you have that. So we need to get rid of that. So let's do that first. 
So I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to use the spot healing brush tool. And I'm going to deselect so that I no longer have that selection. Now I can come back here and I can click and let's get rid of this here. There's a slight discoloration here. We can get rid of that. Um, probably use another tool for that. I'm going to come back over here and get rid of that, get rid of this. And if I want to get rid of this discoloration, then probably one of the tools that I will need to use is the clone stamp tool. So let's start using that. That one over here is this one here that looks like a rubber stamp. And if this one doesn't work for me, um, then I'm going to try another one. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge the brush a little bit. I'm going to find an area that looks pretty good. So let's start right here. And I'm going to hold down the Option key and I click or Alt key on the PC. And then as I move over, you'll notice that I can begin to replace. And I might have to come back and do this again. Make sure that the stone matches again. And it's not a perfect match at the moment. But again, I want to get that discoloration out of there. And I'm doing pretty good so far. But what I do want to do is I want to get rid of these little blotches. So what I need to do is I need to come back and I need to get, again, the spot healing brush tool. Let's click over here. Come on, whoops, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. My computer is going haywire. Stop, stop, stop. Let me go back and click on another tool. Hopefully this has not crashed. There we go. So let's come back in here. Let's try again. And again, all the while, uh, I'm looking here. Yeah, my computer is really slowing down. Very sluggish. Wow. I apologize, this is very annoying. There we go. So now I just go over the edges of some of these. And um, that would be one way to, to take care of this. Another useful tool for us too is to go back and to use the patch tool again. And I'm getting this security setting thing again that I don't know why. I'm not trying to use um, that. And I can pick an area here. Now it's getting rid of some of this, but, um, and I won't belabor the point too much, but I'll go ahead and I'll, with the patch tool, I'll click a little area here and drag around here, get it selected. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go, like so. This is the area that I want repaired. So if I move it, if I click and I drag and I move it over here like so, or I can move it up here like so and let go, it takes from those areas and it patches it. And then I can hit Command D to deselect. And you can see now it's looking pretty decent. There might be a little bit, of, little bit more work that I need to do. Um, for example, this part here, I don't like that. So I'm going to lasso around it, again, using the patch tool. And then to replace that, I'll click and I'll drag and I'll move it over like so. Until I find a sweet spot and then get rid of that. And that's not half bad, but again, I might need to come back and use the spot healing brush again to get rid of part of that. So, you know, you don't want 
area is duplicated, you want to make sure that everything looks, even in, you know, this brickwork, that it looks kind of fresh and um, unique. Okay, not bad. So let's work on the last part. How am I doing? I have plenty of time here today. So I'm in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use, I'm going to zoom in because I want to start replacing some of these areas up here. So you'll notice that the, the brickwork here doesn't quite, quite fit. So maybe what I can do, and this isn't something that the book does, but um, what I recommend that you do is I'll take something like the, um, the polygonal lasso tool, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to grab an area around it, like so, just a little area, like so. And I'm clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking here until I get a chunk of that. Come on. Oh, my computer's just running problems here. So let me go back. Yep. It's just making a mess of things. So let me deselect and let me select again. I'm kind of duplicating everything that I'm doing today. This should go very quickly on your computers. Um, as I said, it's just all this other stuff that I got going here that probably taking up precious memory that I need. back here. There we go. So what I could do is I could I could move this. If I hold down the option and the command key, this allows me to duplicate. And that's not really what I want to do. So I'm going to undo. What I do want to do is that I want to copy this and put it on a new layer. So to do so, I hit command J. It takes that element and it puts it on a brand new layer. So now I can take it and I can move it into position here. I can move it in here and I'm going to get a pretty close match. And then I'm going to rotate it. And then what I can do is I can erase parts of it. And then I can also flatten it and I can use um, the spot healing brush or I can use or the clone stamp tool or any number of tools to get it to blend a little bit better. So you'll notice that it's still a little bit crooked. So I want to get rid of that. So the tool that you'll use to rotate this and to put it into place is command T for transform. And where you will find that will be under the edit menu. There you go, free transform. So now I can move over one of the corners and I can rotate it until it matches. And that looks pretty good. I want to get it a pretty close match. Then I can go ahead and hit the return key. I keep getting this error message. I don't know. I don't have a security issue. So now I can come back. And because this is, oh, no, no, no. There we go. Come on. Because this is on a separate layer, I can, there's a variety of ways of doing this, but I want to be able to see underneath. Oh, this is just so annoying. Um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the opacity here a little bit. So I can see through, through it a little bit. And now what I can do is I can, with that opacity adjusted, I can come back here with the erase tool. No, the eraser. Come on. And it doesn't have to be quite so big. And now I can come back on, make sure that I have that layer selected. I can come back and I can erase that. The parts that don't match here. 
or in back in here until I get something that fits pretty nicely. I'm gradually getting it to work. And then what I'm going to do next is I'll use the clone stamp tool to fix some of the other parts in here. But it's, you know, it, this is the tedious part of retouching and working with Photoshop. Um, takes a little bit of patience. So now that I have a pretty good match, what I want to do is I want to combine these two layers. And there are different ways of doing that so that they aren't separate anymore. Is that I hold down the command key to select both the, the, this layer and this one, um, the new one that was created um, by making a copy of just part of it. And to combine the two, you can hit command E. Um, but what that does is it, it flattens those two. Rather than do that, I want to keep everything intact. So to do that, um, and keep the originals in, in as well as I hold down the shift, the option slash alt key, the command key, and, and hit E. And now you'll notice it makes an additional layer combined, but it keeps those others intact. So that if I need to go back, I can make you know those adjustments and changes if I want. Now I can go back as I said, and I can use the, um, the, spot heal, the spot healing brush right here. There we go. I can come back in here. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Not that small. And work over the edges here a little bit and clean up, clean it up a little bit. There we go. It's not looking half bad. Maybe come down here, fix that a little bit here and here. Now let me get rid of the hard part. Let's up here, the windows. So what I want to do is actually take from these windows and use them to add windows over here. And we can do the same for the building down here that we have in part of this building. And then we can use the clone stamp tool to build upon that. And we can take elements from here and again, do the same thing to build this across all the way to the edge right here of this building. And we can take from the other building adjacent to it and we can build across from that as well. So again, this takes a little bit of work. How am I doing on time? I got time here. So again, this is the kind of the tedious part, but this is what you have to do. So I'm going to come back up here with this new layer that I just created and use the clone stamp tool. So I'll pick this one. Let's see what size this brush is. It's a little bit too big. Make this a little bit smaller. And how, whoops, I didn't want to do that. There we go. So now what I want to do is I want to take from here. So I want this just a little bit bigger, about the size of the window. And what you do is you hold down the option key and move over the area that you want to use as your source material and click once. And now once I move it over, you'll notice that you see that it's being duplicated. <clears throat> so now I can click. And I can move down a little bit and I can click and you'll notice to the right there's a little um, plus sign, little target and that indicates where it's taking the source from. So you can see that I've taken that. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go ahead and move it over again. And actually, I'm going to come back over here to this source. Um, something happened here that I don't like. So I'm going to go back and because I have time, I just don't like that. I don't know what happened to that. So I'm going to take from here. And 
and hold down the option key and click again. There we go. So this should look a little bit better. Try to match up and align it so that it works. And that's not too bad. Um, for some reason, it's making it really, really light on my computer. And that should not be the case. There isn't that much of a difference in the tone. Now I can continue to take from here. <clears throat> um, just for the heck of it, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm looking at the kind and the normal. Everything should be working OK. So this will be the last time that I do this. I don't need to know maybe one more time. We'll click from here. And we'll click down here. Click down here. And it just keeps getting lighter and lighter. And I don't understand that. But you can see how I'm duplicating parts of this. This is very bizarro. But again, I can come back and I can, again, use the spot healing brush um, and use it to clear up some of these areas. I can click in here. Um, I remember I said, don't drag. But I can click in here and I can clean it up just a little bit. Um, I'm going to do that one more time. Actually, maybe use the clone stamp. I guess it's um, should be fine. There we go. So let's come down here and let's again use the spot healing brush to clean up these areas to um, just make it look sort of seamless. Does it look like the original or not? I don't know. It just has to look right when we're done. So I'm going to take and again do that stamp one more time to line it up here with this other building. And it's already taken from the last source. But I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to come all the way back here, hold down the option key. Let's move this up just a little bit. And click and move over. Let's find that source. And that looks pretty good. Want to make sure that it lines up in perspective. And click. Come down here and, and click and click. There we go. So I've added to it. I need to come back and maybe clean that up a little bit. And again, the spot healing brush is a good tool. The, um, the other one that we've used, uh, I don't want that. Spot healing brush and the patch tool, both would work pretty well in these areas. I'm going to start with the spot healing brush tool. And try to clean up some of these areas just a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. And especially because I've zoomed in so much on this that when I zoom back out, it will look, you know, almost seamless. And that's your goal. Try to get rid of a good chunk of that. And probably there's a little bit of work that needs to be done here. I probably need to, yeah, I need to get rid of some of this. Now, what I can do is I can bring some of this down or I can bring some of this over. So my choice would be, again, to work from what I had over here, this area, and use the clone stamp tool to move across. Now, another way to work is similar to what I had done down here. What I can do is I can take the polygonal 
um, lasso tool and I can take from here, let me take from maybe right about here. No, I don't want, I have the wrong tool. I don't want the magnetic lasso tool. I want the polygonal lasso tool. There we go. So I'm going to take a little chunk of this. And it's doing weird things with me. I apologize. So let's start here. Take a chunk of this like so. Um, yeah, because this is all original down here. Maybe I'll take a little bit more. Come back, come back to the beginning. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make copies of it. So I'm gonna hit Command J. Come on. There we go. So now I've made a copy of that and put it on its own layer. Use the move tool and slide it over. There we go. And then I'm gonna come back once I've aligned this up like so. You can see that I'm just sort of faking it. And I'm gonna to continue to do that throughout until I've made a series of these that matches up until the very end. And then I'm gonna massage it all again using the clone stamp tool and using the spot healing brush tool. Um, but before I do any of that, I mean, I either need to erase or I need to combine them. So I can either take these two layers that I've just created and hit Command E. So let me show you another way of doing that. I'll go ahead and hold down the Command key to select both of these. Now, if I hit Command E, you'll see that it does flatten that. So now what I need to do is I need to use, again, the clone stamp or spot healing brush. We'll start with the, the spot healing brush. It's always a good place to start and try to get rid of this, this edge here. And again, if you just kind of click, 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 gradually you get rid of it. And because this is relatively small innocuous area, that once we zoom out, it should be pretty um, almost invisible. So let's try that. So as I zoom out like that, you can see I'm rebuilding part of this. And I probably need to adjust this a little bit here, but I need to go all the way across here to get rid of that. So that's about as far as I I'll, as I as I'll take this today. But you get I think you get the idea. That um, let me review a little bit and make sure that, that you are clear on what we're doing here today. Is that the first thing that we had to do is that we had to crop the tool, use the crop tool, to crop our photograph and to straighten it. The second thing that we had to do to, was to adjust the range of tonality, to remove some of the the age yellowness from it. So I chose to use curves. You could also use levels. You could use brightness contrast to get rid of most of that. Um, the other thing that we would needed to do was to get rid of the, the crease and the, um, um, the dust and scratches. And we use the spot healing brush for that. And then the last step was to get rid of this guy that was over here. So if I were to turn this original layer back on, see, that's the one that I still have that I can always go back to if I need to grab areas and copy them, paste them, and put them you know, in a layer that I need. I can always do that. Um, that's why I always copy the background layer. Um, we used um, the patch tool for that. And then we use the clone stamp to tool to rebuild some of this. We also, you know, 
then massage the areas with the healing brush and um, again using the patch tool and again there's a little bit more work that needs to be done back there but we're you know pretty darn close to getting this done okay um, one more thing before we go today you'll notice that the color is still a little bit off so what i can do there is another um, adjustment layer that i can use to try to adjust the color balance in here there's a couple of ways that i can do that there is um, the bright the color balance tool right here. So if I add that, you can see that um, there is quite a bit of yellow that still exists in here. Well, let me adjust this in, in the yellows here. And I'm going to take midtones. And I'm going to push that a little bit more towards the blue and see what I can get here. Okay, and I want to preserve luminosity. So come on. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I can also push from here the cyans and I can push those a little bit more towards the reds, try to match a little bit closer to what they have. And that looks pretty decent too. So I'm gradually, you know, uh, getting that yellowness from the bricks and stuff out of there and getting a closer match here. So that's one way of doing it. Using, um, okay, color balance. Now, another adjustment tool that we could use, I'll go ahead and turn that off. Another adjustment tool. And we can do that for highlights and shadows as well. And we have this one here, the hue saturation tool. So if I select this one, Okay, overall, I can have a master. And you can see that if I, I can really tweak the colors here with a U, if I were to slide this way over, notice that I can make this almost look like a duotone. If I adjust it a little bit more to the right, notice how green it becomes. Okay. So I want to try to assign sort of a balance to that. I can also create custom. This is the master. But if I come in here and I click on that, I can adjust, for example, the yellows. So the yellows, maybe I want to reduce the saturation of the yellows. And just by doing reducing the saturation of the yellows, look at how much closer I am to the final version. And then I can also switch from the yellows and I can go to the reds, because there's a lot of reds in the ones that they've added. And I can go ahead and I can increase the saturation just a little bit to get a closer match. So not only can we get rid of the, some of the, the glitches in there, but we can also um, somehow I change the saturation to none on the reds. And I don't want that. I don't know what I was doing here. Let me bring this back. So bump it up a little bit. There we go. So I can also make adjustments again in the overall coloration of all of this. So that's it for today. You guys work on it, try to fine tune it. Um, and again, uh, have fun with this background area here and trying to retouch that to get it look seamless and a nice clean match. I think you can do a better job than what they've done here. Oops, wrong image, come back here. Because if you look and you don't have to look really that closely at theirs, um, you can see that, um, you know, it's not perfect, but Actually, you know what they've done is pretty nice. So um, I changed my mind. I think they've done a pretty decent job here. And you could do the same. Okay. So if we get as close to theirs as possible, then we're in good shape. Okay. Are there any questions for me before we leave today? From any of you? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the recording.
and then maybe at the end of the semester, I'll decide which ones are better. So. Okay. So if there aren't any more questions, um, that will be it for today. And I'll let you guys um, log off and I'm going to say goodbye. Oh, there is one in the Q&A. So hold on here. So I'm going to go ahead here. Oh, okay. Archie um, Santana, this is a um, answering live for you. A recording of this um, will be available in about an hour or so. Um, so if you miss the first part, you'll be able to rewind and catch up. This image um, is available on Google Drive. I've put a folder in there of all the, the lesson files that you will need. Okay, so you should be able to download, download them. So if I go back up here and I show you and I go to, let's go to Google Drive. Here's Google Drive. And if I open it up here for Art 192, this is spring 2021. This is the one that you guys have access to. And I look in here, it's this folder right here. It says PSCC 2020 lesson files. And if I double click on that, You'll see here are all the, the folder, here are all the lessons. So we're working on lesson two. <clears throat> if I double click on that, you can, you know, download the whole folder if you want. Or open it up and download the individual files. And here they are. Here's the start file, here's the end file. And that's it. Okay. Does that answer your question? I hope. Okay. Okie doke. So I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to wait for you guys to log off, but I'm going to pause the recording now. Bye bye.